Hello everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another Aviation News video. On Wednesday, June 19th, the federal government approved the merger of Canadian North and First Air to Northern Airlines serving the Northwest Territories and Nunavut. The merger itself was actually announced last year, but the two airlines have been waiting for regulatory approval since then. Both airlines stated that this merger was needed in order to provide the best possible air services across the Arctic and that the new wholly Inuit-owned airline intends to be an economic driver in the circumpolar region as one of the North's largest private sector employers. The combined airline will keep the Canadian North name, but use the new First Air livery, which was introduced in 2017. The headquarters for the new airline will be moved to First Air's existing headquarters in Ottawa, with Canadian North moving from their current headquarters in Calgary. However, both companies recognize the value and potential in the North and in the Alberta market and remain committed to supporting and growing the Alberta presence. Charlie Watts Sr., President of Makovic Corporation, and Dwayne Smith, Chair and CEO of Inuvialuit Regional Corporation, the parent companies of First Air and Canadian North respectively, released these statements. This is good news. In 1990, we bought a troubled airline, First Air, and made it sustainable. At the time, we promised to create an airline owned by all of the Inuit of Canada, and we are now much closer to making that a reality. We are following through on our commitment to act in the best interest of all Northerners. By optimizing the Northern Air Transportation Corridor, we are making significant progress in empowering Inuit to become meaningful participants in both the Northern and national economies. The rationale behind the merger is that Canadian North and First Air both serve similar routes to begin with, especially between major centres like Edmonton, Yellowknife, Iqaluit and Ottawa. It is worth mentioning that both airlines previously attempted to merge in 2014, but negotiations stopped just a few months in. That said, both companies have had a change in leadership since then. Here's the thing, in Canada's North, air travel isn't one of multiple transportation options like it is in the South. Yes, it is a long drive between most of our major cities, but at least there are alternatives to flying. In the far north, that's simply not the case. For many communities, it's quite literally a lifeline, and the only way for important goods to reach people living there is by air. So, with the possibility of the only two airlines serving the region combining into one, some concerns were raised. In February, Canada's Competition Bureau released a report addressing some of these concerns. In their report, the Bureau stated that the Commissioner of Competition is of the view that the proposed transaction can be characterized as a merger to monopoly in the vast majority of the parties overlapping origin and destination pairs and is likely to lead to significant and materially higher prices and lower quality services for air passengers and cargo customers. The Bureau did not find that business failure was probable or likely to impact the Commissioner's conclusions. Both airlines responded promptly to that report, with a lengthy statement acknowledging the Bureau's authority, but also stating that its artificially restricted findings in this matter are of limited value and suggest a superficial understanding of the Inuit organizations proposing this solution for sustainable northern transportation. Our Inuit communities are surprised and extremely dismayed by the report, and it is our sincere hope and expectation that the Minister will pursue his mandate of reconciliation and acknowledge that the very organizations proposing this merger have a constitutional mandate to represent the rights and interests of Nunavik and the Inuvialuit region. In their statement, First Air and Canadian North continue to outline various shortcomings of the report and detail the economic realities forcing the companies to merge, including significant inefficiencies due to overlapping routes, insufficient demand, and redundant schedules. That being said, in Transport Canada's statement approving the merger, they did outline some terms and conditions for the combined airline. No price increases for both passenger travel and cargo delivery beyond those related to operating costs, no reduction to the weekly schedule options on all routes of the airline's combined network, access to northern infrastructure, facilities and equipment for new airlines entering the market, a commitment to increasing Inuit representation across the merged entity's operations and several transparency and accountability measures, such as providing quarterly financial updates and yearly financial statements to the Minister. So what does the future hold for air travel in the North? For the moment, we don't fully know the details of how the merger will play out, but according to the airlines, that information should be available in the next few weeks. However, in the meantime, both companies will continue to operate as two separate entities. I'm curious to hear what you think of this merger, especially any of my viewers living in the territories. Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, thank you very much for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.